Good afternoon friends. So my name is Brian and today I'm going to be putting together a rigid R4512 table saw. Now if you haven't seen my other videos I also did a series of videos on assembling an INCRA uh, router table, fence, and clean sweep unit. You can check that out. Just search for my other videos. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to put this saw together but I'm not going to put the rails on it because I have a INCRA rail set that I purchased to go with this saw so that I can do really accurate work with it and I'm real excited about getting going on this because this is the beginning of being able to build cabinets um, for my kitchen and being able to build vanities for my bathrooms and I've got a motor home that I need to build some cabinets for and I'm just really excited about having the tools to do work that I've wanted to do for a while. Um, before I get started on this, you know, I've, I have a Ryobi uh, job site saw that's portable, folds down. You know, it's a good saw. If I was patient, which if not, I probably could, um, um, yeah, I probably could build cabinets and furniture with it. But I want something that's a little bit better and that's a lot safer. I also had a Unisaw, um, a Delta Unisaw, it was an older Unisaw. and. Um, I didn't like it, you know. It was a solid saw, but it threw dust everywhere. I actually wound up buying a full face mask. In fact, it's it's right here. I I bought and I highly recommend wearing a full face mask and a respirator if you're going to do woodworking. And the reason is it keeps the dust out of your lungs and it keeps crap out of your face. You only get one set of eyes, one set of hands, and you only get one set of lungs. And so you need to protect them. So. Um, and on that note, I'm doing my barefoot garage stuff. Um, I've actually got a furniture blanket down to stand on. But, you know, I, I, I like to walk barefoot in my garage when I'm doing things that are safe to do that way. So without further ado, let's get started. I did have to special order this, and it does have a little bit of freight rash on this side where um, something bumped into it. But we did inspect it before I took it out of the store, and it looked fine. So it's really, really nicely packed. Um, I'm going to bring my trash can over because there's about 4,000 pieces of plastic bag in here. You know, there's a piece of paper in here that I think I should hang on to just for a little bit longer. So um, I'm going to start taking stuff out and just unwrapping it and using my router table as some place to just set things. Uh, there is a book on this, which is kind of funny, and there's a little key for the power switch. This is a pretty solid uh, miter fence. Actually, I need some paper towels because there's oil all over this stuff. Back. So I don't want oil all over my router table, so I'm just going to wipe this uh, this packing oil off. And it looks like it's on everything. Well, that's kind of a shame. Everything except the manual. That's kind of funny. On the bright side, at least they didn't decide to oil the manual or the push stick. Oh no, there's some junk on the push stick too. The hardware is fairly nicely packed. Um, it says what it's for. Um, you know, I, I I'm pretty impressed so far. And some greasy little Allen wrenches. I doubt they'll be used. But it's nice that they're included. This is stuff that's part of the caster set. That was one of the reasons I bought the saw is, is for $600 it included shipping to the store, helped to get it in my truck. I could inspect it and make sure it wasn't damaged. It uh, included 
all of the, uh, and it included the casters. You know, by comparison, the Grizzly unit, um, the wheels were $100, the shipping was $125. By the time you're done, it was a $1,000 saw. And it still had a crappy fence on it. I'm like, yeah, what's the point? Um, Rigid also includes a lifetime service agreement. I have not had to use it, you know, but I've been really, really happy with my Rigid tools. And uh, I think this is going to be the same way. I think I'm going to be really happy with this tool. I don't know what some of this is, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. Chinese hair. Hmm. Right. And this is not a bad looking um, fence, but it's not going to get installed. It's actually a pretty solid looking fence, but I, you know, I want the precision that Incra offers. Now there are some loose bolts here. I think that's stuff that goes with the fence. I think this is the stuff that links the rails. And, you know, this is a really nice looking um, fence, but I'm putting in the anchor one because the precision and that, I mean, that's the whole reason I bought a nicer table saw is to get the precision. And stamp steel tables, you know, there's so many people that make a big stink about, oh, I, I have to have cast iron tables. You know, it adds, it does add weight to the saw. And that's good, but oh, I just don't think it's that big of a deal. My uh, Unisaw had cast iron tables and it was still a piece of shit. they had um, followed Inker's lead and used um, craft paper. The finish on this leaves a little to be desired. It's got some warts. Um, but, you know, it's a table saw, not an antique. It's just not that big a deal. Probably the closest I'll ever get to these pieces is right this second when I'm looking at them. And there's a little wear and tear, there's a scratch here, you know, I'm not, I'm really not worried about it. More fence parts, it's really nice extrusions. This is part of the wheel assembly. is nice the wheels are pretty much assembled so it's just less that I have to do
that's the power switch. More at the bottom. And there's a table saw blade hiding in here and on the bottom is a cast iron table. So now let's read the book. All right, so what I need to do now is get this out of the box and um, I need some scrap lumber here that just happens to have a screw in it. So. Now, one of the wonderful things about spacks, bits, or screws is you can generally reuse them. So it's going to go right back in the box and it'll get reused. And that's one of the reasons they're worth what they charge for them. So I'm just getting a couple pieces of scrap lumber so that I can slide this out. cut the box because I'm working by myself I need to I'm not going to pick this up and carry it in fact one of the things I'm going to do right now is just go ahead and remove the dust chute and it's nice that it has four inch dust collection oh you know the other thing is there's some packing material in here and I suspect this is never going to get easier to get rid of Yeah, I'll do this as soon as I get it out. So first things first, let me cut the box. Now, I'm not just gonna leave this flap on here. I'm actually gonna cut the, across the box so that I can remove the flap because my goal is just to slide it out.
it's heavy. Yeah, surprisingly. That must be that cast iron. Okay, so I finished removing the plastic from the bottom of the table saw and just tilt that down. So I got it sitting on a couple boards like it says to. So I need to move I need to move the tilt so that I can get the foam block out for shipping. So I'm gonna just tilt it all the way over. This is much easier to remove in that orientation. And then I'm just gonna run the saw back the other direction. they refer to this as a totally enclosed fan cooled motor and it's actually almost a TEFC. The capacitor is exposed so it's not a TEFC and that's actually a misrepresentation. In a true TEFC unit um, no part of the motor would be exposed to water, dust, dirt, bugs, or air. Um, only the outside would be exposed. Um, it's kind of funny how Companies will sometimes use marketing like that. All right, so the first rule of putting together stuff that's made in China is to ensure that you're using uh, Loctite. Because odds are really good, it's not going to stay fastened if you don't use Loctite. I'm using Harbor Freight's version of Loctite, which is usually a dollar a tube when you catch it on sale. Yep, and these are not the right bolts. Oh, that's really nice. Oh, and they recommend lock washers. I'm still putting Loctite on it. Still not the right washers. Come on guys, what in the hell? Oh, maybe it's the wrong side. All right, let's see which one it is. Is it this one? Oh, it is that one. I just have it backwards. So it calls for a flat washer and a lock washer. No big deal. I 
And again, I'm still using Loctite on these. There's one. Now we'll move to the other. And the Loctite doesn't isn't probably necessary, but I'm, I'm putting it on anyway because I don't want this stuff to come apart on me. Access to this middle screw is a little bit on the tough side. Um, it's it's kind of under this hump for the motor, so I'm going to use a wrench. And it's good that I have my own wrench because their wrench isn't nearly this nice. you're wondering these are eight millimeter um, sockets on these bolts that I have. Now they could easily change because I suspect that they have a few factories that make these for them. Make sure the other ones are locked down pretty good. <sighs> All right, so um, on the back of these packages, it tells you what the bolts are for. So next, I get to set, put together the um, stand. So first things first, I'm going to figure out what size these bolts are. There we go. They're four millimeter. Awesome. 
so the way this works is you just attach one of these in each place and let me look at the orientation. Yep, they go like this. So this is easier to do on the floor. Sorry you guys can't really see, but I promise it's not that exciting. I'm just putting screws in. Now I am putting Loctite on each one, or Harbor Freight's version of it. easier if the screws were longer than you know four millimeters maybe I'll have to turn them like this Yeah, the first one's a little bit of a monster to start, but then I think they'll go pretty easy from there. Hopefully this won't be as difficult because now it'll stand on its own. is that they use the shortest possible screws and they have round heads so they're really hard to grasp and get started.
All right, so at this point I have the base assembled and I can move to mounting it. So they do recommend that you remove the foam block at this stage, which of course I've already done. Front. Yeah, it must be where the control goes. And there are some little alignment tabs on the bottom of this to help you get it in the right spot. That's nice. Well, these edges are a little sharper than I wish they were. They're not razor sharp, but they are sharp. this base is used for more than one thing because there are extra bolt holes in it. And this is the same uh, general process as the other screws that hold the uh, um, wings on. It's a lock washer with a cap screw and a flat washer. And these are six millimeter. And again, I'm gonna install Loctite on each one. is the bolts here are way longer than they need to be. Now, and apparently there's some trap or some in the bolt on that one. these down. Okay, so this is kind of a clever assembly, um, and now it's time to put in the bolts that keep it still. And 
and uh, you know it's just this is really very very cleverly designed the brackets move back and forth and also act as a pivot and um, the bar in the middle is what produces the leverage to pick the press up so this right here or I'm sorry not press the uh, saw that's what picks the saw up doesn't look like they've ever heard of using the same bolt twice because every one of these has been a different size which is kind of funny There we go. So now that the stand is installed, I can put these back on. And they, you know, they probably could have gone on in the first place, but um, I wanted the extra clearance. I didn't want to take a chance on it. All right, so those are in. Now it looks like it's time to flip this bad boy over, and it's going to come this way. So um, let me set up for that. So to do this effectively, I need some leverage. So I'm going to use three two by fours, and I'm going to set them about a foot from the from the uh, table saw. And what that should allow me to do is roll this over like this, and then act as a counterpoint for me to pick them up, pick it up. So I think I'm going to need a little more clearance than this. So I'm going to scoot this back. And at this point it should just lift up. Hey, there you go. Don't get your feet under there. Oh, so the bar X is a lock. Yeah, not bad. So there's a bunch of oil on top of this. So first things first, I'm going to get this oil off here. Real nice surface finish. They've even beveled the edge a little bit, although the front edge of this is a little sharp. But overall, it's real nice. I had to put a little tiny scratch here and here when I flipped it over, but you know, that's the price you pay for working by yourself. So there are some, oh, that's what these are. Yeah, it ain't going there. So there's supposed to be a fence holder here. It ain't happening. Blah, 
but it can go on the bottom. And, uh, and so now I'm going to pay the price for not having done this before I flipped it over. But that's okay. It's, it's just a couple of bolts. I'll, I'll handily survive this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it on there and then I'm going to put Loctite on the bolt and get it from the back. Let's see if that stays long enough for me to do this. Got one. All right, got the second one. Good enough for both of those. I don't think I'll ever use that, but we'll see. All right, so now we get to mount these beautiful knobs. And they have little caps on the screws to keep the threads from being damaged. So the knobs, um, the screw on the knob acts as a lock in addition. And there's a little washer on the front of it. So this is kind of where we went into a dilemma is I need to change how the switch mounts because the switch is designed to mount to the bottom of there, and that is not going to happen. But I am going to put this key in before it gets lost. Okay, so that's there. That may get redone. It may become a foot switch. So I think that's it for the assembly. Um, I think, you know, the only things that are left to do at this point are um, to put together the the um, the guard and um, I'm not 100% sure how this is going to go, but I'll figure this. Out in a second. Um, 
So, and this is where I have to kind of stop and start to do my Inkra stuff. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this video and I'm going to break out the stuff to do the Inkra fence assembly and figure out how that works because that's really the next step in this process is to install the Inkra fence. Um, as much as I would like to, this fence is not part of my game plan um, and uh, so I'm not going to install it and I'm not even, not even going to mess with it. Um, I'm sure it's a nice fence, but it's a two-part fence and I have a beautiful $400 Inkra table saw fence behind me that uh, was bought for this saw. So, Thanks for watching my video. I hope you found this interesting and amusing and um, check out my other videos on the Inkra router table, clean sweep, and uh, router lift. And uh, be sure to check out the second video on this saw where I install the uh, Inkra fence system on it. Thanks for watching.